I know that KSP is kind of starting to drop in player count, as the game's last update was roughly a year ago, and everyone is waiting for KSP 2 to drop, but I'm gonna make a video about KSP anyway. Specifically, the Realism Overhaul mod, a KSP mod dedicated to making the game as realistic as possible, sometimes at the cost of the player's sanity. I'm going to review the basic changes and look over some Realism Overhaul features that would be good to have in the base game. But before we start, please like and subscribe. I only have a few hundred subscribers as of now, so it would really help out if you did. Realism Overhaul isn't really one mod you install all by itself, but more so a collection of mods that are installed together with CCAN that together completely overhaul the game. But what is overhauled with the installation of these mods? The most major change would be the addition of the real life solar system and all of its planets and moons. You no longer launch from the Kerbal Space Center, you launch from the Kennedy Space Center. Additionally, traveling through the real solar system requires much more delta V. The 3400 meters per second of delta V need to get to orbit is increased to 9,400 meters per second. But fear not, viewer. Realism Overhaul has also revamped engines and fuel tanks to help you reach orbit. Engines now weigh less than they do in the normal game, and many upper stage engines have massively increased specific impulse. Realism Overhaul also adds many more customizable parts. The list of smaller changes goes on and on, but frankly that's boring, and most people have probably already clicked off the video, so let's get to some more juicy content. The best word to describe the gameplay of Realism Overhaul is pain. Come to think of it, that's kind of just normal KSP, but RO is significantly worse. There are so many things that you have to account for that the time it takes to make a rocket is increased tenfold. In stock KSP, it may take you an hour or two to build and fly a rocket to the MUN, but in RO, there are so many things you have to micromanage, and I mean so many things, that it takes way longer. In addition to all the normal vanilla stuff you need to manage like delta V, electricity, aerodynamics, orbits, and landing, RO adds ullage, burn time, ignition count, fuel type, crew training, tooling, build times, parachutes, fuel boil off, avionics type and level, and life support for you to manage as well. I'll give you an example of the absolute pain of KSP RO gameplay. On my first attempt at an orbital flight, my second stage engines refused to ignite, and the exact same message would appear at the top of my screen every time. NK-33 failed to ignite vaporing feed lines. After about 10 times of seeing this and slamming my fist against my abused desk in a fit of rage, I decided to actually google the issue and found out that I can't start certain engines in 0G or negative G situations, and to properly start the engine I just had needed a hot stage which fixed my problem. If you thought the base game was buggy, realism overhaul is on another level. The sheer amount of bugs is incredible. And the sad thing is, these bugs aren't even the fun kind you see in other games, most of the time. They're just plain enraging bugs. Now before I start talking more about bugs, I have to mention something. I didn't uninstall the DLC packs from the game when I installed RO. The DLC packs aren't installed by RO, but I never used any DLC parts in my builds, so I have no idea if that broke anything. Anyway, some strange bugs I ran into. These procedural wings decided to stretch the 32 integer limit meters, no idea why. Sometimes the UI will break and I won't be able to open up these little info windows by right clicking. Also, sometimes Earth will just become very low resolution, which is a bit annoying. Also, the game loves to crash when I start it up or shut it down. There's also a bunch of other annoying bugs that you may run into that will make you want to throw your computer out your window, but listing bugs isn't exactly the most exciting content, so on to the next section of the video. Now, let's look at some features of Realism Overhaul that would fit well into the base game, or KSP2 now, since KSP1 will not be receiving any more updates. First, I think the ability to air launch would be one of the best features to add to the base game. In RO, you have the option to air launch, where the aircraft starts in the air. You are able to set the direction, speed, and altitude of the vehicle. There are also air launching levels. You can upgrade to allow for larger vehicles to be air launched. While you could construct an airplane to air launch something in the stock game, the air launch platform cannot be recovered, which kind of defeats the entire point of air launching in the first place, to save money. Anyways, air launching would be a very interesting addition to stock KSP. Another thing I would love to see in the base game would be procedural tanks and procedural wings. With procedural tanks in RO, you can choose any size, shape, or texture for a fuel tank, and you can fill it with whatever fuel you desire. And procedural wings give you near complete control of the wing's shape. In addition to procedural wings and tanks, there are also procedural decouplers, avionics, and SRBs too in RO. All these procedural parts give players so much more creative freedom, and procedural parts as a stock feature would be an awesome addition. Also, KSP RO has a bunch of smaller physics and aerodynamics tweaks that add a nice bit of realism. In stock KSP, if you have a rapidly rotating rocket, nice bit of alliteration there, 
and you go into time warp, the rocket magically stops rotating, which definitely breaks the immersion. In RO, the vehicles will continue the rotation even into time warp. Realism Overhaul also has a way more advanced aerodynamic model that takes things like the area rule into account. For those of you that don't know, the area rule basically states that for the least amount of drag in transonic speed regimes, speeds between Mach 0.75 and 1.25, the ideal distribution of cross-sectional area looks like this. I'm probably not the best person to explain this, so I'll link a good video about it in the description. Advanced aerodynamics really spice up the stock gameplay, especially when you're going for very efficient vehicle designs. My opinion about Realism Overhaul is a little bit divided. I love the concept, and it can be rewarding and provide an interesting experience, but it isn't everyone's cup of tea, and the glitchiness of it, and of KSP modding in general, kind of pushes me away. I recommend you try it out, but don't be afraid to google a tutorial for it. There are lots of added features and it's pretty hard to learn by yourself. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing. Goodbye.